When you're smiling. Hey, you. Bubbly sparkling water is crisp, refreshing, and perfect for any occasion. Kind of like my voice, but in a can. No calories, no sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly. Crack a smile. If you've got a thirst for knowledge that never quits, Brightside podcasts are just what you need. Whether you're into recent discoveries, space exploration, true stories, or useful tips for self-improvement, psychology, gadgets, or just your day-to-day routine, there's something for everyone. Nine etiquette rules we're constantly breaking. Why would a modern person need to be aware of etiquette rules? Our lives are fast, and we eat on the go, stay in our PJs all day, and drink tea and coffee from paper cups. But sometimes it's advantageous to slow down, dine at a fancy restaurant, and make a good impression. Being polite and looking good never go out of fashion. Here are some basic etiquette rules to help you look stylish and charming. Number 9. Greetings A proper greeting is vital. First impressions are based on this, which is why it's good to be equipped with a couple of rules. You should shake someone's hand quickly without holding it for too long or pulling it toward you. Don't use a crushing grip, but be firm. You have to respect your companion's personal space. Patting someone on the shoulder, even if you know the person well, is considered to be tacky. When greeting a woman, a man can bow slightly. Number 8. Communication Punctuality is a must. You should arrive at meetings on time or slightly early. If you are going to be late, call ahead and apologize. If you find it hard to be punctual, learn some tricks to avoid being late. For example, prepare everything you'll need to take with you in advance and put these items in a specific place. Try to predict any delays that might happen. Traffic, problems with trains, a forgotten umbrella. Compliment people more often. Your companion will be pleased and you can demonstrate your powers of observation, your ability to see details, and your sincere interest in them. Number 7. Men and Women The rules of common courtesy say that there should always be a mediator present when two people meet for the first time. For example, a common friend can be asked to introduce people to each other. A man should never hold a woman's purse, even if he wants to help. What is more, a man can only take a woman's coat if he is giving it to a cloakroom attendant. Number 6. Clothes The right clothes can boost your confidence and make a good impression on others. But this doesn't mean you have to buy expensive clothing. For a man, it's very important to always have perfectly clean shoes and a well-fitting jacket. Don't buy clothes with imperfect shoulders. Shoulder seams shouldn't go beyond your shoulders. All parts of a suit should be the same style and in the correct size. You should also consider the fit of a suit. Thinner men should opt for slim fitted suits, while men with an average or full build should choose a classic fit. A jacket sleeve should cover your wrist, but it shouldn't cover the lower joint of your thumb. Ideally, it should end half an inch above the shirt cuff. Pay attention to the suit venting. There are three types. Center vented, double vented, and ventless. If you have an athletic build, you can go for a ventless suit. Otherwise, the two other styles will fit you better. According to the rules of etiquette, the lower button of a jacket should be unbuttoned. If you want to emphasize your figure, choose a slim fit jacket. If you want to look more impressive, choose a double breasted jacket. It's just as important for women to find suitable clothes. As a rule, women are advised to choose a dark skirt or pants and a light top, jacket, blouse. This combination emphasizes their figure and looks elegant and modest. Modesty is also important when choosing jewelry. Too much jewelry in varying styles demonstrates poor taste. Choose jewelry according to the occasion. Dainty accessories are best for the office, but when you plan a night out, you can wear snazzier combinations. Number 5. At the table. Wait until the host invites you to the table. Don't sit down at the table without an invitation because there may be a seat assigned to you. Wait near your chair until all the other guests have gathered at the table. Sit down only after the host has done so. If you are invited to a table where there are people you don't know, don't talk to them before you are introduced to each other. It's not polite. Pay attention to your hands and don't put them on the table. It's better to keep them in your lap. Putting your phone on the table means that you're not interested in conversation. Number four, how to sit correctly. Good posture and leg position while sitting are crucial. If you sit in a low armchair, don't put one leg over the other. Keep your knees close to each other and your legs parallel. You can also use a royal trick called the Cambridge cross. Put one foot behind the other, crossing your ankles. It may help you to feel like royalty. Men should sit with their legs crossed. 
Another option is to have both feet on the floor, keeping both legs straight. Additionally, both men and women should sit with a straight back. With their buttocks touching the back of their seat and the shoulders slightly back, their weight should be distributed across both hips. Number three, at a restaurant. Before going to a restaurant, if you say to your companion, I invite you, this means that you should pay. Let's go to a restaurant together means that you only pay for yourself. If you go to a restaurant with a group of people, wait until everyone has taken their seats. Only then should you start eating. There are so many different types of cutlery and it can get confusing. However, you don't have to know all of them. Typically, you should start your meal with the utensils furthest from your plate. After that, move toward the center. Another important detail is how you position your silverware during the meal. If you take a break from eating, your knife and fork should be placed in the center of your plate so that their tips create a slightly angled inverted V. When you want to show your waiter that you have finished your meal, put your knife and fork parallel to each other with their tips at the 10 o'clock position and their handles at the 4 o'clock position. If you want to show that you're waiting for the next course, you can place your knife and fork perpendicular to each other. The fork should be vertical and the knife should lie horizontally. The fork should cover the knife and have its tines up. If you want to show that you liked your food a lot, put your knife and your fork parallel to each other with their handles in the 9 o'clock position and their tips in the 3 o'clock position. If the meal wasn't to your liking, position your knife's blades between your fork's tines. This construction should look like a V. Number 2. Pouring and Drinking For women, it's important to make sure that your lipstick doesn't leave a mark on your glass. Dry your lips with a tissue before drinking. Every person at the table should pour their own drink. A man should offer drinks to a woman first. Don't pour too much, and definitely don't overfill wine glasses so as not to spill your drink. Number 1. The Most Important Rules for Drinking Tea According to the rules of etiquette, in order to get to know a person better and have a pleasant conversation, people should invite each other to have a cup of tea. It can be considered rude to refuse the offer. Just remember a few rules. Stir your tea carefully without making sounds with the teaspoon. You shouldn't leave your spoon in the cup. Rest it on the edge of your saucer. You should also never leave the spoon on top of the saucer. A teacup is held with one hand, and a saucer is held with the other. It's impolite to hold a cup with two hands and leave the saucer on the table. Never add milk before the tea has been poured. Put sugar in your cup after you have added milk. 